Okay, so something I have kind of already been discussing before was I keep on mentioning the fact that the weight, the edges are unweighted. And then we talked about the length. Let's just add a, a, an edge of a weight length of one. And then we can get a length of one because we transversed one edge and so on. And I also brought this up way, way earlier when I spoke about that edges can have characteristics to them. So a lot of the times we will give edges characteristics by a thing that's called weights, where a graph is weighted if every edge of the graph has an associated positive value to it. So you're going to give it a value basically to your edge. And that value will be dependent on whatever characteristic you're looking at. It can either be strength of bond. In other words, like you would have a bond between your family member, like your parents, is going to be weighted way heavier than an acquaintance, a bond between an acquaintance. So in other words, you are more likely to, so like if you're living with someone, you're more likely to interact with them and more likely to, you know, if you're infected with something, infect them. Whereas if you're just walking past the street of someone, you're not necessarily going, to, and you're just saying hi to them, you're not necessarily going to infect them kind of a thing. So those are the kind of characteristics you're talking about. It can be, you know, actual bonds, or it can be interactions. And interactions can be measuring, like, if you're going to give them a disease, or if you are going to share with them a piece of gossip. So again, a situation where things may change and your family bond won't necessarily be as weighted as heavily is... Gossip in, you know, like something that you're really interested in, your whatever you read, whatever series you watch, you won't necessarily, you know, spend a lot of time discussing it with your grandmother or, you know, your uncle, but you'll spend a lot of time discussing it with your friends. And then your friends would have a higher weighting bond in relation to this particular characteristic so that the edge group there would have a higher weight versus, you know, your uncle or your grandparents or something like that so your edges will represent the different relationships with different links but it can also represent the bondage of those links or different aspects like the length of the road essentially to get from house a to house b so it can also just represent distance itself so you have all those different associations so now we have to think about how can we represent this in the mathematical context so that someone can look at it and draw this graph out and this is where we get weighted graphs and weighted matrices. So let's get right down those definitions. So first we have a weighted mat a graph. So a weighted graph is called a weighted graph. Well, a graph is called a weighted graph if every edge of the graph we have an associated positive value to it. So here we don't look at negative values, look at positive values in that, listen, if you're not bonded with someone, you're just not bonded with them. That's a zero, you know, move on, that's life. Kind of a situation or it's a case of if you never ever ever associate with someone so someone like on the opposite end of the world you would actually even give them an infinity weighting in regards to you will never get there kind of a thing so bondage and the the bonds or the links and how you represent them can also be dependent on how you actually want to study something so if i want gossip to get from point A to point B situation, I would not necessarily weight the links between your friends as l higher than your parents kind of a thing, particularly if it's gossip relating to, you know, your friend group. I would actually weight, you know, the links between you and your friends as a minimum number, a minimal number, a small number, whereas I'll give a heavier weight to your parents in regards to the gossip being spread then from your parents to, you know, your friends again. So it's a situation, and the reason why we do that is we can then find the shortest path or the shortest description to get somewhere. And when we're looking at shortest paths, you know, the weightings, you would want them to be scaled so that the things that are more important have a lower weight because then they'll be more likely, you know, you're more likely to speak to your friends. So if you look at shortest paths, you would then look, you know, well, Instead of going through your friend's parents, you would go directly to your friend's situation and that kind of aspect. So again, your weighted graph, it's associated with a positive value. Those positive values can mean different things and it can mean different things based on what you're looking for. And the reason why I bring this up and I talk a lot about it now is because a little bit later we're going to add, particularly with the weighted matrix, we're going to add the infinity or a really, really large number to kind of cancel out the fact that you will ever meet this person or ever go in that direction to them. So 
just so that you are aware. And then there are places where there are zeros as well, but won't necessarily be that important. But right now, all you have to really care about is you have your way to graph and every edge has an associated positive value, you know. So in this case, we're going to go from one all the way to infinity. So it's called a weighted graph if every edge has an associated positive value. And that brings about our weighted matrix. So obviously, if you have a weighted graph, the JSONC matrix is not exactly going to help you fully. But I've also already spoken about this. I've preempted it when I spoke about, oh, you won't necessarily just have one. You may have two. You may have three or so on in your elements. So that's essentially what's going to happen. So you're going to have your weighted matrix. And your weighted matrix, instead of just saying that, hey, A is connected to B, you're going to say the weight between A and B instead of just the one for A is connected to B, just so there ex is this, exists an edge, we are going to put the weight of the edge down in the spot where we would have done it in the adjacency matrix. So we let G be a weighted graph of order N. Then the weight matrix and we're just going to refer to the weight matrix as WG. So remember we had AG for adjacency, IG for incidence. Now we're just going to have WG for weighted matrix. Again, we're not very um, creative when it comes to this. Is given by, and we're going to have the same kind of rules, structures that we approach. You'll notice when we talk about matrices, we define them. They have a very similar structure to them. So we're going to say, okay, we have a weighted matrix G is equal to some think, you know, a BIJ or WIJ. We could use a small WIJ actually here, but I'm not going to because we're going to represent the weights between edge one and edge two in a different way. So I'm leaving it as is. And we have a N by N matrix here. So the rows and the columns are going to be represented by the vertices versus the incident. Remember the incidence matrix, it was not the case there. So here, the rows and columns are going to represent the vertices, where our bij is equal to the weight of vi to vj. So in other words, whatever weight the edge from vi to vj is, if vi vj is an element of the edge set, and infinity otherwise. And we do it this way, and again, this is also going to be dependent on what you're going to do and everything, but we do it this way so we can find things like minimum spanning paths and stuff. So if it's unlikely that you have a connection with someone, in other words, no edge exists between you and some person on the other side of the world, not even through social media or anything like that, you give it infinity because then when you travel in your pathways, you would not want to choose something that is an infinity distance kind of a situation. You're going to choose something that actually has a doable distance. So it's taking that infinity is basically handicapping the connection between you and the other. So it's almost like keeping the connection there, but it's handicapping it to the way that, particularly the way that we approach graphs. So it's saying, hey, you're never going to actually reach that person or situation. So in this regard, you're not going to actually utilize it. Okay, so let's add a few more definitions here. We call the weight of a tree, and that is just all the sum of the weights of the edges in the tree. So if you had a tree, so let's just say weight of tree, it's just the sum of all the edge weights. in tree okay so say you had a tree situation and the tree is let's just keep it a short one and we had three there and we had four there and this was a this was b this was c the weight of that tree is seven you just add up the weights of all the edges in the tree okay 
and let's add some more definitions on the next page. So again, I broached this already and I threw out my rambling about weights and the importance of weights and how the characteristics of edges with the weights of the edges can be written and how it will change depending on whatever task you want to do. I gave this away that the lengths of the walks of weighted graphs are going to be important. So let's look at the length of a walk in a weighted graph. Okay, so the length of a walk in a weighted graph is basically the sum of all the weights along that walk. So all those edges in the walk, it's the sum of all those edges in the walk. So it's the sum of all the weight edges in of the edges in walk. And again, this is not the official math definition. I'm going to write the math definition now. So if you had, you go from A to B to C to D, A, B, C, D, and you go back to C, for example, and you had 3, 2, 3 there, you would actually say 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3. So it would be the sum of all the weights of that walk. So let's just write down the formal definition. Let G be a weighted graph. with walk W, the length of walk W is the sum of all the weights of the edges in the walk. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to draw an example of how to write the weighted matrix T from the graph so you can just see how it works. And you're going to notice it works very much the same as an adjacent matrix in that when there is an edge, you wrote a 1. Now, in this case, you're going to write the actual weight of the graph. And where there is no edge, instead of writing a 0, you're going to give it an infinity to almost penalize it. So obviously, just as heads up, if you ever do this on a computer, it's not going to be necessarily infinity. It's just going to be a really, really, really large number to penalize the situation of you don't want to travel that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we have a graph on our screen, and we're going to write its associated weighted matrix. So remember, again, it's very much like in the JSON matrices, so we're going to have every row and every column is represented by a vertex. So let's just do that. D, E, and I'm just going to fill this in so we can automatically see where there are. You can always pause this to try it before I do it, but again, let's just go through the process. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in, and I work, I like working from A all the way down to E, so we're going to go through that approach where we say, okay, step one, is A connected to itself anywhere? No. So previously in the adjacent matrix, you would have zeros there. So in this case, we are going to write infinity. So there are no loops, so we can write infinity all the way down there. So again, it is a simple graph. So the weighted matrix would also be symmetric. If it was not a simple graph, this is not necessarily the case. But again, it's a simple graph, so it's going to be symmetric. OK, now we go through what is A connected to? A is connected to B. It has a weight of 5. The edge has a weight of 5, so we put down 5, put down 5 there. Is A connected to anything else? No. So we can actually just put infinities all the way down. So again, in your JSON matrix, it would be zeros. Here, because it's a weighted matrix, we are penalizing it. We're making it really, really hard to travel from A to any of the other vertices by giving it an extraordinarily large number. Okay, so then we move on. B is connected to A. That's already covered in our graph on both sides. Now we look at what else is B connected to. B is connected to C. It has a weight of 3. So we fill that in. Since B is not connected to anything else, we can fill in infinities everywhere else. Okay, then we move on. C, C is connected to B. We've already covered that already in our graph. Now we can look at, is C connected to D? Yes, with a weight of 2. And we can put it on this side as well, again, because of the symmetry. And is C connected to anything else? Yes, it is connected to E with a weight of 1. So then it's done. Then we move on to D. 
is deconnected to anything other than the rest. So we already covered C. So we look as D connected to E, yes, with a weight of 7 and 7. And then we're done. So now we can actually put our matrices symbol there, get rid of this. And we have WG is equal to that. So again, very, very similar to your JCC matrix, matrix, except that instead of 0 where there's no edge, we penalize it by putting infinity. And wherever the actual edge is, instead of putting one, you just say an edge exists. We now put the weight of the edge.